I really don't need this reference thing I put at the bottom, this bitmap, so let's dump it. But I want to put in some lens flares. So first of all, I need something to put the lens flares on. And to do that, I'm going to add in a new solid. So let's right click on this and say new solid. I'm going to make it black because I want the lens flares to be on a black background to make it easy for me to get them to show up across the text. So I'm going to click on that. And there we are. I've now got a completely black background at the top. Press the enter key and call it lens flares. Now what I want to do is add on the lens flares. So let's go to the list of effects, which I can't find for Toffee on this computer. Where's it all gone? Well, it's very probably in this bunch of stuff here. It's just not being shown at the moment. So you see these little chevrons in the latest versions of Premiere and all the other Adobe programs. If you see those chevrons, it means there's a bunch of other palettes on there. And yet one of those is effects. And I'm going to type in the word lens to find the lens flares. Now I have something called Boris Continuum on this system and they've got some really, really nice lens flares in that which will make them look exactly like the ones that I've got in my title. But let's assume you haven't. Let's use the one that Premiere's got. So let's ignore all the Boris stuff and come down here to Lens Flares. You notice I've got some other ones here from HitFilm. So I've got two extra plugins in my After Effects. I've got ones from HitFilm and I've got ones from Boris. I think they're better than the After Effects ones, but I'm not going to use those. I'm just going to use the After Effects ones. So let's take that and just dump it onto here. And there you can see I've got a lens flare. Not quite the right type. So let's go over to the Effects Controls panel and then see what different types we've got. Well, I've only got three and the one I used is this one. If you look back at my original, my original is actually a little bit stretched and a bit purple. You might notice there's a few little bits popping over the screen here, which is actually these bits of my lens flare. But what I've got to do is I've got to stretch that lens flare and change the color to make it a bit more purple. And the first thing you might say, David, is hang on, I can't even see the title through it. I mean, you've blotted it out completely. So one way to sort that out and I should warn you, this doesn't work in this particular scenario, but I'll explain why later on. What I'd normally do in After Effects to sort that out and see the things underneath it, I go down to the Lens Flare layer and I would change this thing, which is the mode, which is the way it sort of blends it beneath it. So it's set to normal right now. If I change it to screen, it actually gets rid of the black and then you can see the title underneath it. Yeah, great, you'd think. Then, of course, I could come over to the effects here and then just take the lens flare and click on that little dot next to flare center and shove it in the right place. And the obvious thing to do would then be to animate that so it goes across the words audio and then it'll match what I've got here. So what happens is after the titles have moved in, the lens flares come up and they animate across the words of audio. And then the second one animates across the bottom here and then they disappear. So the obvious thing would be to animate this and just take that point. Now, first start, I want it to actually come in where the text stops moving. So click on one of the text layers, press U for the Uber key so I can see where the text stops moving. And actually, that's where I want it to start. I don't want anything here at all. Just like I'm in Premiere, I'm just going to go to the edge of the clip, grab hold of it and drag. And that chops the front off the clip. So no lens flare, now lens flare. And then you might think, OK, next thing, I want it to start off at nothing and get brighter. So the obvious thing will be to animate the lens flare brightness. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the stopwatch and put it down to nothing at the start. I'm then going to move it along a bit and then turn it up, which I think I probably turned it up to about 60, 70 percent. And it's going to stay on screen and then disappear here so that's where it's gone so basically i wanted to stay fairly bright and then at this point i want to start it fading away so i need to see these keyframey things here on the timeline so let's again press the uber key on the lens flare layer and i can stick another point in there so you can see it starts off at nothing stays there and then by the time they start moving off i'm going to put the brightness down to nothing so there we are i've now got my lens coming in and going away again now, after it's disappeared, it doesn't do anything. So it doesn't really matter what happens here, but I could just grab the end of that and move it across because I don't need that layer later on. Yep, lovely jubbly. I want it to move as it's coming in and going away. So let's go back to the start and go to flare center. Turn on animation for that. So it's in the right place at the start. At the end, I just want the flare center to move across to there. 
Yeah, and I've got a lens flare. Cool. Now, I didn't mention two things, though. One, it's a bit purple. Two, it's actually stretched. You know, this is a circular lens flare in After Effects, whereas I really wanted a oval one. And I can't change the look of it up here. Actually, what I did was instead of fiddling with the lens flare, you know, the lens flare is on this solid, which I called lens flare, but it's on basically a background plate. And what I did is I stretched that background plate out. So if I select the actual layer and go to scale by pressing the S key, if I change these numbers, it makes that entire black plate bigger. And they're linked together, so as I do it, you see it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's getting bigger in both directions. And I don't want it to get bigger in both directions, so let's put it back to 100. And I'm going to turn off the little link thing there. That's selected, obviously. You change one, it changes the other one. That's unselected. Now what I can do is I can make it wider without making it taller, and that's going to stretch my lens flare out, so let's do that. So make it wider and wider and wider, and it makes my lens flare wider. So let's zoom down a bit, maybe you get a better idea. That's that back plate which the lens flare is on, and I'm making it wider so it stretches it out. Of course, in doing so, my lens flare is over here somewhere. So all that fancy animation I did on my lens flare center was wrong. I should have stretched it first and done the animation afterwards. I'm going to have to change that animation I put on the center of the lens flare. So let me go to the lens flare layer, press the Uber key, and it brings up the keyframing there that I've got on the lens flare. Now what I could do is just select the keyframe and adjust it, but I think what I'll do in fact is just select both of the keyframes. There's only two, there's one at the start and one at the end, and then delete them, which has just got rid of it completely, and I'll just set them up again. Now to get that layer's flare center, which is way off here somewhere back on screen, the easiest thing to do is you click on this little target sort of icon that you got there, and then you move the mouse over the window, and you can see you get these crosshairs, which is telling me to click, it'll put the center where I click. Off. Now I'm going to turn animation on again, move through to the bit where the lens flare has disappeared, and then drag on the X keys to move that straight across. And the reason why I got rid of the keyframes and put them in again was because it's so easy to make sure it goes in a straight line by just dragging across. If I'd been sort of going back to my keyframes and trying to adjust them, I'd have to make sure that the Y and the X were the same as opposed to what I've done. Might have got it a little bit brighter than I wanted it, but we can always adjust that by adjusting the, the brightness keyframes, but let's leave it at that for the moment. Now the other thing was colour. It's not the right colour. I want it purple to match this. So I did that by adding an effect to it. So let's get out of this and go to the list of all the possible colour effects that I've got. It's actually the one I used happened to be colour balance. So I just drag that and I can either drop it onto the clip or I can drop it into the effects control window. What I did was just to come in here and you can see it split up into shadows and midtones and highlights and I just adjusted the blue balance and you can either put in more red or take out green. They'll both change the color. I've changed the midtones. I could change the highlights as well and I could change the shadows. Let's up the shadows and down the greens on there. You're going to fiddle around with it till you get something that you like. And there we are. I've got in a lens flare flying across the screen. So yeah, I think it's getting a bit too bright though. The brightness is controlled by this. You know, it starts off at nothing, goes up to 65, stays to 65, and then goes back to nothing. So I need to change these two keyframes. So what I'm gonna do is pop to this first keyframe here. And I could try getting it in the right place, but just like Premiere, it's a lot better if you come over to these things and click on the little triangle to take you back to that keyframe. And I'm gonna just take that down a little bit to maybe you know, 50% that looks okay. I'm then going to jump to the end one and stick that to 50% as well. So now it comes in there, yep, and then fades away again. That's kind of what I was after. Okay, I'm going on a second lens flare doing the same thing. So I'm going to go back to the list of effects, choose lens flare again, find the Premiere one, and I'm just going to dump it in here. And then I'm just going to set the same kind of animation that I had up with the first one. So click on that, set the brightness to nothing, move it along, and I want to put the brightness to 50. Move along here, add in a keyframe. Can't see the keyframe, so let's uber key it. Add in a keyframe, go to the end. It's in the wrong place, obviously. So what I want to do is adjust the center. So right at the start of it here, let's just click on this and put it in the place where I want it to start. Turn on keyframing, 
go to the end and this one travels a bit further and there we are that's popping up and flying across and the only thing is it's not purple whereas this one's purple but that's very easy to sort out let's just put it before the color balance filter so now both lens flares are affected by the same color balance filter and you might say still not right that's because I forgot to change it to a 105 prime and there we are job done have to be honest I could have just taken this lens flare and then duplicated it in pretty much the same way that I duplicated a layer and then just come down to that lens flare and made it down here instead of up there both would have achieved the same thing I chose to make it up from scratch and then just whack it in the right place so there we are I've now got my animation and I can use it inside of Premiere. I have to tell you there is one thing wrong with it which I'll tell you how to sort out in a second but let me show you it going wrong first. Thank you.